Hi everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is wonderful that you were here with me today on another Wanderlust Wednesday. Today we will be traveling to Fiji. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and below each video click the thumbs up. Also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, are you ready? Pack your suitcase, hop on that plane, and let's fly to Fiji. Fiji is an island country in Melanesia, which is a region in the South Pacific Ocean. I have to say, I like that region of Melanesia. It sounds an awful lot like Melanie. <laughs> Anyway, Fiji is an archipelago, which is an island chain of more than 330 islands. Even though it has 330 islands, 87% of the population live on one of the two main islands. And if you're curious how those islands were formed, the majority of them were formed by volcanic activity. The climate in Fiji is known as tropical marine and it is warm year round. Even though it is warm year round, there are two seasons known as the warmer season and the cooler season. The warmer season is November to April and the cooler season lasts from May to October. The major occupations in Fiji revolve around farming and tourism. Fiji is a large exporter of sugar, so lots of people work on sugar farms, and tourism provides great support for the economy as well. Fiji is known for its year-round warm temperatures, as I just mentioned, and it is known for its soft coral reefs and its white sandy beaches, which call tourists to its shores from all over the world. The majority of the population of Fiji is made up of native Fijians, and there are three languages that are officially recognized there in Fiji, and they are English, Fijian, and Fiji Hindi. Sports are also very popular in Fiji. Rugby is the national sport, and netball, which is a game that emerged from early versions of basketball, is the most popular women's sport in Fiji. And basketball is also very popular. There are lots of interesting tidbits about Fiji that don't quite fall into these categories that I've already described. One is that Fiji is home to the monkey-faced bat. It's also known as the Fijian flying fox, and it is Fiji's only known native mammal. These bats are half a pound to eight tenths of a pound in weight, and they are difficult to capture, so little is known about their biology, but it is a species listed in danger of imminent extinction. It's sure a cutie, isn't it? Fiji is also a great place to surf. The Cloud Break Wave is a place to surf that is sacred to the Fijian people. It is owned by the Tabarua Surf Resort, and the resort is able to regulate the number of surfers on the reef that causes the wave so that the reef is not harmed, and the resort then also pays the local chief for the right to surf the wave. Another interesting fact about Fiji is that the international dateline goes right through one of its islands. The International Date Line is a theoretical line that divides the world into two hemispheres, east and west. And on the island that it runs through, the island of Tavanui, there is even a spot where you can jump forward and back in time between today and yesterday. The traditional dance of Fiji is known as the Meke. Through the spirit of the song and the dance, the performers are able to tell the story of Fijian culture, the history, and its legends. It is performed by men and women, but never together. And the meke is performed by dancers who wear long flowing grass skirts. The last thing that we're going to talk about today is Fiji's Rainbow Reef. Many marine biologists believe that all of life on the planet began in the western Pacific Ocean just near Fiji. And truly, that's hard to deny at the Somo Somo Strait. Somo Somo is Fijian for good water. Anyway, the Somo Somo Strait is the home of the Rainbow Reef. The Rainbow Reef is considered one of the most vibrant underwater worlds. It's a place where reef sharks, manta rays, and clownfish all share the same house. And we today, in our travels to Fiji, are going to paint our own interpretation of that beautiful 
Rainbow Reef. So in order to do this, you will need a few supplies. You will need a piece of watercolor paper. Mine is six inches by six inches. You will also need some surface protection and some watercolors and of course the brush and water that go along with that. Paper towels are always great to have around for watercolor projects. And then you will also need a fine tipped black marker. Sharpie makes a great one of these. All right, so we are going to use a picture of the rainbow reef as our inspiration, but then we are going to kind of make it our own. So you can see here that we are going to be painting a rainbow, and then we are going to be drawing in all of these great corals and sea life that we find here. The other thing that we are going to be doing is we are going to make a dot or two of different colored uh, paint and then we are going to try to make that into something that lives in that coral reef. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to do is just simply paint a rainbow on our paper. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can paint it from left to right or right to left or you can paint it from top to bottom or bottom to top. It's up to you. I think I did this one left to right. I did the rainbow order here, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I did that left to right. I think maybe this time I am going to do top to bottom. All right, so I'm first going to take my red, that's the first color in the rainbow, and I am going to paint across the top. Now there is nothing exact about this. It is just simply getting some paint on the paper. I am going to cover the entire uh, width of my paper, but I'm not going to try to get it into exact lines, and you'll see as we go along how I try to blend my colors together too. Alright, so I did my red, now I'm moving on to the orange, and um, I think you'll probably remember, but I'm just going to remind you that with watercolors you put your uh, brush in the water before you put it in the paint, at least to get started. Watercolors don't work very well without water. All right, so I have my orange there, and now I am going to go over the intersection of the um, red and the orange together, and I am just going to kind of smudge it, I guess, for lack of a better word. I'm just going to smudge it. All right, now I'm going to use my yellow, and I am going right up there into that orange. I'm leaving a little strip of orange, but I am trying to kind of make that where it meets just a little bit smudgy, flowy, what's the word you would use? All right, so I have red, orange, yellow. So the next one is green. Let's see, I'll use this green. And I am just going to paint across here. Now that was a little bit darker than I wanted, so now I'm just going to add water to it and spread it around. All right, there is my green. Now, red, orange, yellow, green, blue is the next color in the rainbow. So I will be adding blue here. This is quite thick too. I don't think these paints had actually dried out from the last time that I used them. So they're a little bit sticky, but that's okay. I'm just going to add water when I get a little bit too thick here. And then remember, I'm going up into the color above it because I don't want those stark, stark lines of color. All right, so then the last one is purple. So I will add some purple to my brush and then I will finish out the paper. Oops. All right, I want some more purple there though. It's kind of watery, so I'm going back just to the paint and not putting it in the water just to get a little bit more color there. And then I'm going into the blue a bit and there we go. All right, so now I have my rainbow that I will now be putting my reef on. But in order to do that, I need to let this dry. So I am going to let this dry, and then I will be back with you once it is dry, and we will continue on our project. I will see you soon. All right, I am back with my dried rainbow, and I am about to make it into my rainbow reef. Before I get to that step, though, I have one more thing to do. I am going to look at my rainbow and I am going to figure out where I want to draw in my reef. So on this one, I drew in my reef at the bottom. I think on this one, because I've got my rainbow going a different way, I am going to draw it more in from the side 
kind of like on this picture. So I am going to find a place that I don't want to draw and I am going to put in a dot or two or maybe three or four of a different color than is already there. So I'm going to be drawing along here and probably down here a little bit. So up here, I'm not planning on drawing anything. So I am going to put a couple dots of color that then I will be drawing into fish. So I think I'll take some blue because there isn't blue up there. And then I am going to just put a dot with some water on it and I'm just going to kind of blob it out. It doesn't have to look like anything. You can kind of make it into the shape of a fish if you want to make it into a fish, or you can just kind of see what shape occurs, and then you can make it into an octopus or a squid or any other type of sea creature that you want to. Uh, let's see, I think I'm going to do one more. I think I'll take some of this purple and I'll put a blob up here in my red. I have to say I'm not feeling incredibly imaginative today, so these will probably become fish, but I can't wait to see what sea creatures you add to your rainbow reef. All right, so there we go. That is ready. We're going to let that dry as we now draw in our reef. Now we do want to be very careful and not accidentally put our hand in that wet paint as we're drawing in our reef. So if you're worried about that, go ahead and let this dry for just a few minutes or run a hair dryer over it for just a few seconds and then you can continue on. I am going to live a little bit dangerously and I am going to draw in around this paint while it's still wet. All right, so I think I am going to draw in kind of from the side some coral. And coral can look really any way that you want it to look. It's just kind of this bumpy, um, bumpy material. And I am going to put in a few little cracks and ridges. You can see here that there are so many different places where color is added and there are just ruffles all around. So there we go, I think I like that. And then I will put in, I'm going to put in another coral plant. This one I'll make a little bit more, um, a little bit less blobby. <laughs> but then I'll still put in the little lines and I will still make it hopefully look like coral. And I know that this coral is not all rainbow colored. It's kind of a fun interpretation of the rainbow reef. All right, so then down here, I see that they have some of those little tubular things. So I'm going to draw some of those. Really, you can have fun and draw. However, this the sea life, the coral that you want to draw, you can look up some pictures for inspiration. You can go off ideas in your brain. It's really up to you. I think here I'm going to draw some of these types of coral in. So kind of they kind of look like a shell. And then I'll kind of draw down that way. And then I'll just draw in these lines. They kind of make it look like it has a center. Yeah, it's going to be very fun to see what you come up with in your drawings of the Rainbow Reef. I really like this one, so I am going to recreate that one too. That one to me looks kind of like a cactus, which I think is kind of funny under the sea because obviously a cactus doesn't need water. So clearly that's not a cactus, but I think it's kind of a fun one to see under the water. All right, and then what should I do? I'll do a few more tubular things, just like right there, just to kind of finish it out. All right, there we go. Okay, so at this point, if your paint is dry, you can go ahead and uh, draw in your fish. As you can probably see, my paint is not quite dry, so I am going to wait just a couple more minutes, um, and then I will come back when this is dry, and we will finish out our painting of our rainbow reef with a couple fish. Okay, I'm back and my fish blobs have dried, so I am now ready to do the final step of this rainbow reef painting. All right, so I'm going to take my marker and I am going to somehow make these blobs into animals that would be swimming around there in that rainbow reef. So obviously fish come to mind very quickly. I think I'm going to try to make this one into a fish and maybe this one into a small shark. Let's see what I can do. All right, so I am going to kind of draw around this painting 
and let's see if I can make that circle a mouth of a fish. I'm trying to kind of make it look like it's looking out of the painting. So let's see, I was planning on using these as fins, this little blob here of blue as a fin, and then maybe this one right here as a fin. I don't know, we'll see how this works out. All right, and then I will put two eyes in there. I can kind of believe that's a fish, right? It's going hum, hum. <laughs> I don't know, not my best work, but you know what? This is art and I'm having fun, so that is the important part. All right, and then this one, I think I can kind of see the shape of a shark in it. So I am going to draw down around here. I'm trying to get my hand so you can see what I'm drawing as I'm drawing. Um, so then that kind of has a fin there, and then I'm going to do that little, that upward uh, fin that sharks have, and then draw down there, and there is the shark's eye. You know, I once did an art class that started with a white piece of paper and a bunch of watercolor blobs on it. And we had a marker, and then we just had to, based on the shape of those blobs, draw them into things that we recognized, kind of like we did here with the fish and the shark. I think that was a great exercise, and I think you would really enjoy it. Just take a white piece of paper, put a bunch of watercolor blobs on it, wait for the watercolor to dry, then take a Sharpie and draw them into things based on their shapes. I think you'll have a lot of fun. Well, I know I had a lot of fun making this rainbow reef with you. I would love to see pictures of your rainbow reefs. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture of yours and put those on our Facebook site. Thanks so much for traveling with me today to Fiji and learning all about the interesting world of the island nation in Melanesia. I had so much fun traveling with you. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. We will be talking about a fun film and doing an associated activity. I can't wait to do that with you. But until then, thanks so much for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for traveling to Fiji with me. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time. <music>